Hello, my name is Michael Garcia, and I am a graduate student with uh, CMOP at Oregon Health and Science University. And today I'm going to show you the second step in DNA extraction. So in the first video, uh, it was shown that we got the Ster Stervex filter, broke it out of the uh, casing, and cut it up and put it into a 2 mil cryovial. So the next step, what we want to do is um, take that 2 mil cryovial and add uh, about a half a mil of DNA extraction buffer on top of the filter so that it's completely covered and we want to incubate that at 55 degrees Celsius for 16 hours to three days. And so I have one already incubating. Right here. And as you can see, it's all covered and it's been incubating for about 16 hours. And so the next thing that we want to do is we want to add 165 microliters of sodium chloride. And just add that straight to the uh, liquid inside of the 2 mil cryovial. And then we also want to add 165 microliters of 10% C-tab. So I have my 10% C-tab already at 55 degrees pre-warming. And what that does, it makes it less viscous so that it's easier to work with and we get a more accurate amount. All right. And again, add 165 microliters straight to the uh, liquid in the 2 mil cryovial. It's also a good idea to pipette up and down while inside the liquid, just so you get all of the C-tab out of the pipette tip. So then we want to give it a good vortex at the highest setting. And then centrifuge uh, very quickly just to get all the liquid down to the bottom. Okay, so after everything has been well mixed and centrifuged, you want to return it to 55 degrees Celsius to incubate uh, for 10 minutes at 55 degrees. It's been 10 minutes, now we want to remove our 2 mil tube from the 55 degrees Celsius and we are going to transfer the liquid that's inside of that tube to a brand new 1.5 mil Eppendorf tube. So when we transfer it out, it we want to try and avoid transferring any of the filter with that. So just try and get in between all the filters, uh, cut up filters inside there, and just grab the liquid, all the liquid that you can. So after you have transferred the liquid to a new Eppendorf tube, we want to now add 600 microliters of chloroform to this tube. And we have to do that in the fume hood. Okay, so now we are at the fume hood. And in the fume hood, we want to add 600 microliters of chloroform to the DNA extraction solution.
Okay, so after we added the chloroform to the DNA extraction uh, liquid, we want to vortex that at highest speed for uh, just one minute. And when you do that, you want to make sure you keep your hand over the lid so that it doesn't accidentally pop over. Okay. So now we are going to centrifuge this at 13,000 RPMs for 10 minutes to give you two layers. So now that our uh, centrifugation is complete, we have, we have two separate layers of DNA and chloroform. So now what we want to do is uh, remove the supernatant and put that in a new two mil collection tube. So when you do that, you want to be very careful not to take any of the chloroform with you. Uh, other stuff. All right. So now that we're done with those, we can set all this to the side. And so now we have our crude DNA. So now we want to purify that. Uh, and to do that, we use a kit. Uh, we use this Zymo Research DNA Clean and Concentrator Kit. And that has everything that we need to uh, purify the DNA. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first step in purifying our DNA using this kit is to add DNA binding buffer so that the DNA that we have in our solution can bind to the filter. Okay, so now we have our little setup right here just for when we're ready. So now we wanna add two times volume of this DNA binding buffer. So that's about 1.2 mils straight to our crude DNA solution. All right, so after, all, after the DNA binding buffer is added to the two mil uh, tube, we wanna give it a good vortex. All right, and now what we want to do is get, have the DNA uh, bound to the filter. And to do that, we need to add 700 microliters of this uh, DNA and uh, binding buffer straight to the filter. And you need to repeat that until all of it is added, is on the filter. Okay, so once the 700 microliters is added to the filter cartridge, we want to centrifuge that at uh, highest speed, 13,000 RPMs, for 15 seconds. And so now that we have all our DNA bound to the filter, we want to add some DNA wash buffer to get all the other contaminants off of it. And to do that, we want to add 300 microliters of this DNA wash buffer directly to the filter cartridge. Okay. 
And most of these DNA wash, depending on which kit you use, most of them you need to add the eth ethanol to this. So you want to make sure that you add ethanol directly to the wash buffer before starting your protocol. And then once you get that's added, um, you want to centrifuge it at 13,000 RPMs for one minute. Okay. So discard, uh, what you want to do is discard the flow through again and return the filter basket back to the chamber. And you are going to finally add only 200 microliters of the wash buffer. So you want to do two times, you want to wash it twice. First time adding 300, the second time adding only 200 microliters. And then return it back to the centrifuge and centrifuge it for one minute at 13,000 RPMs again. Now that this final centrifugation step is complete, we want to discard the flow through. And you can discard this tube as well, this collection tube. And instead of return, uh, turning it to a new one, you want to put it in a clean uh, 1.5 mil Eppendorf tube. So now that we have all our DNA on there and it's clean, now all we have to do is elude it into our tube, our final tube. And to do that, um, I'm using a Tris buffer. You can also use water as well, but you want just to make sure you uh, elute enough of it to get that you have a good amount of DNA. So. Um, you can elute either 15 to 50 microliters of DNA. I'm going to do 50 because I need as much sample as possible. And you just add the you just add the elution solution directly to the white membrane filter in your tube. All right. And you want that to sit for one minute at room temperature. OK, so our, so our solution has been sitting for one minute at room temperature. So now we want to centrifuge that for one minute at 10,000 RPM. And the reason why I do 10,000 RPMs is just so uh, I can't close the cap of the Eppendorf tube all the way. So 10,000 RPMs make sure that the cap doesn't break off. OK, so now that it's finished centrifuging, we can go ahead and discard this filter now that we have all our DNA off of it. and. Now we want to store this uh, purified DNA at negative 20 degrees Celsius for further use. And that concludes our second step in DNA extraction.